Now, let's understand the concept of propensity to consume. See, propensity to consume refers to the ratio between consumption and income. That's C and Y. So, it basically will tell you the level of consumption with respect to the given level of income. Okay. So, if I have to understand more on propensity to consume, I need to understand the aspects. Now, it has two aspects. The first one being your average propensity to consume. That is the ratio between the total consumption expenditure and the total income at given level of income. So, if I have to show you it a mathematical format, it would be APC is equal to C divided by Y. So, this basically is representing the fraction of total income which is getting consumed. Okay. So, ratio of aggregate consumption expenditure to aggregate income is what average propensity to consume is all about. What about marginal propensity to consume? This is the second aspect of propensity to consume. So, this is the ratio between the change in total consumption exp expenditure. So, how do I show this? Delta C divided by delta Y. So, this would represent the fraction of changed income which is consumed. Now, let's understand the concept of propensity to save. Now, what does that mean? See, this is the ratio between savings and income with respect to a given level of income. So, the aspect here is average propensity to save which is your APS. That's the ratio between the aggregate saving and the aggregate income. So, basically we are finding out the ratio of S by Y. Okay, S divided by Y. So, this is the fraction of total income that is getting saved. The next concept or aspect, the next aspect of Propensity to save is marginal propensity to save. That's MPS. A ratio of change in savings to change in income. That's delta S divided by delta Y. So, this refers to the fraction of changed income which is saved. Now, let's see few important relationships which are there. Okay. Now, first let's understand the relationship between average propensity to consume and average propensity to save. If I have to give you a relationship between these two terms or aspects, so APC you know is equal to C divided by Y. Now, APS is savings to income, right? So, Y is equal to C plus S. So, if I add APC plus APS so and then substitute the formulas for these two terms what would happen here it would be c plus s divided by y okay now c plus s we already know is y so y divided by y would be 1 so i can say aps is equal to 1 minus apc now you need to remember these mathematical equations the reason being because we get the problems accordingly okay now value of aps is equal to negative if apc would be greater than 1 when would this scenario occur? This would occur when your consumption is more than income. Sometimes it would happen that if you are earning 100, you end up spending 200 rupees. In that scenario, what would happen? Your APS would be negative. Okay. Now remember, generally in the economy, this never happens. Okay. APC would ne never be equal to zero because you cannot live without consumption neither it would be negative as consumption is always positive at zero income also even if you are not earning you have to consume to survive now the next relationship is mpc and mps now we know what is mpc delta c upon delta y mps delta s upon delta y delta y if i have to give you an equation it would be delta c plus delta s so, just like previously when we substituted the formula, we can say MPS plus MPC is equal to 1. So, MPC is equal to 1 minus MPS. Now, remember MPC is generally less than unity but it is always greater than 0. Part of increase in income is consumed and part of income is saved. Generally, this is the tendency among people and hence we say it is less than unity but greater than 0. 